How's it going? Another day in my shop here. As you can tell, it is uh, it's cold. It is winter here in Canada. And um, I'm here to convince you of the best drift car for under $1,000. Now, it's not to say that I don't love the old VK Swap 240. Um, the car's a riot, but I uh, spend more time working on it than I do driving it. And so, when I'm in the in the winter mode, I like to choose this one. The old V6 Mustang. And let me tell you why. For starters, good luck finding a manual car for, you know, under the $3,000 range. Um, they're getting harder and harder to find. We live in an EV world now. And so, it's a V6. It's not a V8, but uh, on the snow, it's more than enough power. We uh, put some studded winters on it, and uh, you'd think it makes 400 horsepower. It's all the wheel speed you need. Uh, drifting all the way up to third gear, which is like 140 wheel speed. Um, really long gears in this car. But um, let me just tell you the recipe that I think works and why I love this car so much. I wouldn't say I love it more than my 240, but uh, it's damn close, man. I love this car and I love driving in the winter. It's just such a blast. So this is my recipe for uh, a drift car under $1,000. So she's a 2001 um, V6 five speed. And I got this car for $700. She was rusty, had mixed match bottle body panels. I swear to God, the rust was coming up like it was almost to the to the top of the quarter panel here. It was really bad. So I got a donor car, cut the quarter panels off of it, kind of make it look like a little bit of a wide body type type deal. I took the front fenders as well. Just got a little mix match going on, but I think it looks pretty cool. As far as mods go, I welded the diff, which is a free mod. I did the angle kit on the front which is again a free mod if you're good at welding. It's uh, pretty much just a notched control arm. Um, and then you plate that notch as well, just for a little bit of extra strength. I did try to retain the, uh, the sway bar locations and then just added some wheel spacers. And I mean, there's not a lot of poke, um, but it definitely looks better and noticeably more angle. These cars have pretty horrible angle from the get-go. Um, another few mods I've done are uh, a hydro e-brake off of Amazon. So that was about $50. You can see it in here. I made my own handle just to kind of get a little bit more over favoring the driver. Um, I had an energy steering wheel kicking around so for me that was free. Um, the check engine light was on for the catalytic converters. I think it was 02 cents or something. Regardless, I wanted to cut them out anyway. And so the cats paid me out, I think it was about $430. So really, this car cost me, you know, 350 bucks around that range. Um, some other mods I've done are, uh, I just cut the springs on the, on the front. Um, it's not exactly a coil over, but uh, she's a little stiffer and a little lower. Um, I did add some, some fog lights and a light bar under the bumper uh, just because we do like to go down some some logging roads and at night and the headlights weren't that good let's pop the hood here as far as power mods go she's pretty much stock um, the cats were removed um, it has an exhaust obviously because because of that it still has a muffler um, it actually doesn't sound that bad it has a little Little bit of backfire and, and burple. I don't know how or why, but uh, when I under decel, it does sound pretty cool. I made my own intake, and like I said, this is a budget car. I could have welded up something a little nicer, but uh, that seems to do the, the trick just fine. And if you go off a of Crown Vic, you can get a V8 throttle body, which is about 15 millimeters bigger, and um, it's a direct bolt on. It is upside down compared to the V8, but it is a noticeably larger throttle body. So, bigger throttle body, um, you could say that's a cold air intake and exhaust, and that's all she needs. These cars are rated at uh, 190 horsepower. This car has 330,000 kilometers on it. 
So I'd be guessing this thing makes probably 150 horsepower on the dyno, which isn't a lot, but on the ice, um, you'd think it's way more than that. I can drift third gear, no problem, and uh, keep up with some uh, BMWs and some V8 Toyotas. And uh, basically, she just jams. It's a good angle on the car now. Um, we do put studded winters on it, and we go out on the ice. Some studded winters over there. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a ton of fun. And like I said, under $1,000 for this car. All in, including the mods. And uh, yeah, she just jams, man. So if you're looking for a manual car and you want to get in drifting, at least for me, the climate really helps. Um, this thing is an absolute blast to drive in the snow. A um, few things to note. It's not a ton of power. Um, and they don't sell steer like a BMW or a S13 would, where you can kind of just let go of the wheel and let the car rotate. I am constantly having to feed the wheel. Um, the power steering systems in these cars are notorious for making noise and just not overly being that great. So um, that's something I had to get used to, but uh, she jams pretty good. So yeah, $700 for the car, got paid back for something for the cats, $50 um, e-brake, and some parts I'd laying around with a little bit of elbow grease and uh, you know I'm maybe three hundred dollars into this car and uh, the most fun you could have on the snow so if you're trying to get into drifting for the cheap and you live in a snowy climate go get yourself a Mustang you won't regret it your friends might laugh at you for driving your your V6 Stang but I don't care because uh, she jams and I and I can hang out with the, with the guys and uh, have some fun so throw a little clips of the car sliding around some of these uh, logging roads we go down and uh, see how she works but yeah that's the unit right there v6 mustang she jams